is a mess. This is such a mess. She eats oh my mess. gosh, no rain! She ate literally every single leaves of her king! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel or welcome if it is your first time and if it's your first time go ahead and hit that subscribe button for today's video I am trying a entirely new project it's something that I've had pinned for quite a while and what better time than now to try it so for today's video we are going to be doing DIY photo coasters so if you're curious about what the outcome we're looking for is I actually have a tile coaster I keep in my office so this is kind of what it looks like. Don't judge me, it definitely has coffee marks. Uh, but this is what it looks like and it has a cork bottom. So this is gonna be essentially what we're trying to replicate, except I'm going to be using pictures of my dogs. Let's get into materials. So you will absolutely need your pictures. I decided to print our photos on cardstock paper at home. You could totally go to CVS, Walgreens, you name it, and print an actual photo. Or I was thinking too, you could probably use like scrapbook paper if you wanted to have more of a pattern. Either way, whatever you're going to be putting on your tile, you need to make sure you have that whatever picture it's going to be. Aside from that, you will need this cork roll. I picked this up at Michael's and I can link that in the description for you guys a ruler also need a pair of scissors so we can actually cut that cork roll i have some sandpaper because for the base of the coaster i picked up these tiles they're just standard four they're actually four and a quarter by four and a quarter i picked these up at home depot super cheap um, but they're a little bit rough on the side because these are actually made for homes and things like that So I just want to sand them down a little bit make sure we don't have any rough edges aside from that We'll also need our dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I have this rubber cement And then I have a paper cutter on the side which you guys have seen me use before so I can't just mention my pups and not actually introduce you guys to them So here they come Okay, all right, here, let me turn you guys down so you can actually see them. Oh, that's not working. <laughs> this is a mess. This is such a mess. She oh mess. my gosh, no rain! She ate literally every single <laughs> leaves of her king! Okay, you need to chill. Now that we are all calmed down, um, so this big guy right here is my oldest pup. King will be four in October, and he is a lab German Shepherd and cattle dog mix. We got him from a lab rescue up in the Northeast, and he's my big baby. Um, he has a million nicknames, King, Kinger, Kingy, Kingsford. I could go on for days, but yes, he was our first. And this is Rain. Um, she's also a rescue. Um, fun fact, we actually got her from Puerto Rico. They evacuated all the shelters before Hurricane Maria. So my little baby was a stray out in Puerto Rico and we picked her up through um, Tampa Bay Humane Society. And Rain is a true mutt. She is mostly beagle. I know she looks like a little mini golden retriever, has no retriever at all. Um, so she's mostly beagle. She has chow chow. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Chinese Sharpe, Basset Hound, all of the dogs. She's all of the dogs, but she is extremely, um, she has her own personality. We'll just say that. Everybody who knows Rain, she's a little bit of an acquired taste. Um, also has a million nicknames. So Rain, Rainy, My Rainbow, Ranger, Rainy Drew, Need I Say More, Bug, cause she's annoying, love her. So Rain's about 50, 55 pounds, and King's about 70, 75 pounds, just to give you guys an idea of scale. But I love them so much, they're my little babies. I love you. All right, we'll get to work now. Okay, so next, what we're gonna do is cut our pictures down to size. So like I mentioned before, the tiles themselves are four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I want to make the pictures a four by four because I want a little bit of a white border around it. So I'm just using my Fiskars paper cutter and we're going to go ahead and size all four pictures. Okay. 
All right, so our pictures are all cut. I'm gonna go ahead and just put these to the side. The next step that we're gonna do is we're just gonna sand the edges. Just want you guys to kind of see up close. See how all these edges over here, they look so super rough. We're gonna smooth that out. So I just have a little piece of scrap sandpaper. Pull this in half and we're just gonna go to town. Once you're all done sanding down the sides, I would recommend just wiping it with either a piece of paper or maybe a small towel, just to get all of that dust off of the tile and get this ready so that we can start to put our pictures. And that's actually going to be our next step. So I failed to mention earlier when I was going through materials, you also need a um, sponge brush or however you call this. And it's going to be for the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. So this is the same stuff that we used in the marble cup video. So if you guys have not seen that yet, you can click the link above right now and go check that out. What we're gonna do is take a thin layer of the Mod Podge and apply it to the tile. And we're also gonna take a thin layer of the Mod Podge and apply it to the back of the picture. Then we're gonna center it on here how we want it and put that together. I have so much glue on my fingertips now. Once you have it centered where you want it, you just want to kind of hold the picture down and with one hand and then smooth out any of the um, bubbles or anything like that with your other hand. So earlier, when I mentioned that I wanted to have the little border, this is what I was talking about. So the tile's four and a quarter by four and a quarter inches and the picture that got me the border is only four by four inches. So we'll go ahead and repeat this process for the other four images and make sure you let these dry down completely before the next step. While our towels are drying, we're gonna go ahead and measure out our cork. I wanna measure this also as four by four to have a little bit of a border underneath because I don't want you to be able to see the cork from the top. So we'll just roll this out, try my best. So we have our line, you guys can kind of see that going all the way down, and I just measured four inches wide, so I'm going to cut this strip. And the edges don't have to be perfect by any means, so we're not striving for perfection here. It's actually the first time I've ever worked with a um, cork roll. I think what we'll do from here is measure out in four inch increments and see how many we can get out of this. Looks like we were able to get three squares, so we're going to get one, two, and three and then we'll measure out a fourth one. Okay, so we have our cork bottoms. I'm gonna pick one, set the other three aside. And the very first towel that we worked on is fully dry now, so we can go ahead and work on that. So what we're gonna do is, I mentioned that rubber cement. This is the one that I used. And what we're gonna do is flip your towel over, and very similarly to how we did the Mod Podge, we're gonna do a thin layer on the tile and then a thin layer on the cork and piece them together. And just like we did the photo, we're gonna center the cork in the middle. So again, you don't see it from the top. And you kinda of just wanna press them together. So I have this flipped over. I went ahead and grabbed my really big chunky book. I think what I wanna do is just apply some weight on it um, to allow the cork, because it did come in a roll, it was kind of giving me some issues sticking to the bottom. So we just wanna make sure we flatten that out and allow the glue to dry. So I'm just gonna carefully and this over here. I would say the second time around, I noticed that the cork kind of soaked up some of this rubber cement, or I guess glue, we'll just call it glue. Um, it soaked up some of the glue, so I would just say maybe go a little bit heavier handed than I did the first time. Especially on the cork, you want to make sure you put a decent amount. We have the rest of our coasters kind of sitting under this heavy, heavy book over here. I would advise letting this dry down as much as you possibly can. The first one that we worked on is pretty good to go. So while this, while these are drying, we're gonna apply the first full coat of Mod Podge. We're gonna do two of them. So we'll set this aside to dry and we'll do the first full coat on the other three and then come back to do the final coat. All right, we're back. I just let these dry down a little bit and I also switched to this paintbrush. The foam brush was giving me some streaks in here that I didn't really love. And again, this is the first time I'm trying this. So I don't know, we'll switch it up and see if I like this better. But we're gonna go ahead and grab some glue. We're gonna put our uh, second and final coat of Mod Podge. 
So we'll let this dry down again. It took about 15, maybe 20 minutes. If you guys also had like a small desk fan or something like that, that would work to kind of get these to dry down a little bit faster. But we'll let the final coat dry and then we'll do our little reveal at the end. <laughs> so I just went ahead and showed you guys what the coasters look like and how they came out and I of course love them because they're my babies. I do want to talk through a couple of lessons learned. So A, I would recommend using that flat brush I showed you guys instead of the foam brush just because I liked the way that the it painted the Mod Podge on better. Um, the other thing is, I mentioned that I just printed the pictures at home on cardstock and I had an issue while I was putting the Mod Podge, it was actually taking off some of the color. So I think next time I try this, I'm actually going to print out the photos. Thanks Rain, thank you. As I was saying, I think next time I will probably end up printing the pictures themselves. I think putting the Mod Podge on top of the photos um, will be a little bit better, come out a little bit better next time. But I love them and I hope that this was an easy enough tutorial DIY video um, for you guys to be able to follow along at home. And put down in the comments, if you guys were to make your own coasters at home, what sort of pictures would you guys use? If you guys like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.